Q93, Alexandria's number one hit music station. We are welcome back to the show, award-winning filmmaker and co-creator of Unsolved Mysteries, Terry Dunmuir. Terry, good morning, and thanks for coming on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. New episodes of Unsolved Mysteries drop today on Netflix. What can fans of the series expect in this new round of episodes? Well, we have uh, five episodes, um, and we have a couple of high-profile cases this season. Um, we have Jack the Ripper, um, who is a, a kind of a house, household name. I think we chose that story because we wanted um, viewers to kind of understand what he really did. A lot of people know the name, but they don't know exactly what he did, and that, that ca- those cases are still unsolved. Um, we have a woman who mysteriously died in her basement, um, uh, and, and nobody's sure if it's a homicide or an accident. Um, we have a woman whose who severed head was found in a field in Pennsylvania, and we're trying to figure out how her head got there oh my gosh. Um, and who she is and where the rest of her body is. Uh, we have a, a woman who was, was murdered on a stage at her college in New Jersey, um, a theater stage. She was a piano prodigy, and uh, she was brutally murdered on a stage. We're trying to solve that. And we have the Mothman, <laughs> the return of the Mothman, we did a, a back in the vintage, for the vintage shows, um, back in the day, we did a, a story about the Mothman, a creature that was um, kind of predicting disasters and things in the West Virginia area, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and there have been recent new sightings in the Chicago O'Hare area and the Chicago suburbs of the Mothman, incredible sightings. So we're kind of doing, we're revisiting that story with, with new information and new witnesses. That's really cool. Any of these cases that really stuck out to you? Oh, my gosh. All of them, I think. Um, I think Severed Head is the most solvable. We really would like to figure out who this woman was. Um, and and it's, a, it's a very kind of com- complex story that takes us down the road into the world of the, the body parts trade. Um, so that one, I think, is, is the most solvable. And, of course, the goal of the series is always to solve these cases. Um, not just to present them. Um, and the story of Sigrid Stevenson, I think that one is solvable as well. Um, not so much Jack the Ripper. <laughs> he's he's uh, probably not out there and, and uh, ready to be found. Um, but, um, yeah, I, just, I think we have some a really good um, kind of lineup of stories for this volume. And then we have four more uh, episodes launching in October. Oh, uh, nice. So what, what Netflix has done is they've divided the, the what we call the season into um, two different batches of stories that are launching at two different times during the year. What's the process like for you guys when it comes to selecting which stories, which uh, unsolved mysteries to feature? Well, we're always looking for a variety of cases. So we try and do some paranormal um, and some true crime because we think of ourselves as a mystery show, not just a true crime show. Um, we look for a variety of types of cases. Um, <clears throat> uh, we look for you know, different locations. And we've done this, not this season. Well, this season we have a story in Canada, but sometimes we'll do an international story just to broaden out a little bit. Um, but we, we look for cases with, that are mysterious, the ones that we can't stop talking about at our office, the ones that where you go, I don't know what happened there, I don't know. Uh, what happened? You just, those are the ones that, that catch our eye with twists and turns and cases with multiple suspects and multiple theories. How has it been working with the folks at Netflix, and can we expect the series to continue uh, past October when the second part comes out? <laughs> Netflix has been great. They, they are wonderful to work with, um, and you're going to have to ask Netflix if there's going to be another <laughs> season. Um, they, don't, they don't usually... Um, order another season until after this season launches. So hopefully in the next few months we'll know if there's, there's a future for, for Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Fingers crossed. Do you usually go back and watch the episodes? I know you're involved in, you know, putting it all together, but do you usually go back and watch it on Netflix? I do, I do. It takes two years from the time we start development um, to until the, the series launches. So it was two years ago that we started developing stories for, for these two volumes. And wow. um, so it's a a long, long process um, to get the stories. We, we scout them, we produce them, we, we have to get them through through editing. Um, and they're all little mini, they're all individual stories. It's not like you're just telling one story across a few episodes. 
So they're a little bit more complicated. There's no formula for any of them. You have to really find that in production and in the editing room. So, yeah, but by the time they launch, we're really glad they're finally launching because it's been a long haul. Right, right. We've been talking with award-winning filmmaker and co-creator of Unsolved Mysteries, Terry Dunn Muir. New episodes are now available to stream today on Netflix, and we have another batch coming in October. Terry, again, thanks for calling in this morning, and we look forward to watching. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Take care.